All right, then. I have built yet another miner, and I think it's my best miner yet. So the changes from previous iterations started using DLCs again, and there's quite a few new blocks. Also, flat thrusters are a big help. So let's just go through the process. Uh, it wasn't as clean of a process as it is here. I tried a bunch of different iterations. So first you start with just getting the conveyor stuff, the core, core, core stuff, cocktail drills event uh, for it to suck the oxygen out of the atmosphere to saturate the cockpit. Uh, if the atmosphere has oxygen, it's fine, but uh, well, having event sucking it into the cockpit also helps because it, it makes the pressure be good instead of be bad. And that helps if there's oxygen in the atmosphere, but it's not at the breathable levels. The cockpit will get saturated. So, of course, cargo, and then there's an ejector over here. Connectors can be used as ejectors on the small grid and on the large grid. So what you do is throw it on, collect all on, and then the conveyor sorter add to the whitelist whatever you want to throw it. It would be stone. And maybe ice, if you are on a planet where there's a lot of wars in, in the middle of ice. And do not enable drain all on the sorter. The connector will suck everything through it anyway. Alright, next propulsion systems and uh, secondary stuff like power and gyroscopes. So you would want to use probably the biggest components possible in all cases. It's much easier to manage them in the control panel and while PCO is not really that important of a number, sometimes it is and you would want to have it at a reasonable level. But just don't min max because it gets boring really quickly. Next some uh, some auxiliary devices or whatever. Surgery, like uh, landing gears, antennas, beacons, blah blah blah, remote control. You wouldn't really use it most uh, most of the times, but it's useful to have it on because you can just always just grind it down. So now let's go over it. Spotlights, I put them at the bottom and on the sides. They don't get in the way of the view, but uh, they light stuff up. And it's useful to have them at the bottom because if they are at the top and you are flying low to the ground, you may not actually see the ground being lit up. So it's useful to have them near the bottom. Same for the cameras. Better to have them near the bottom than the top. The searchlight can be used as a camera that can rotate all around, which is useful if you are playing with first person only or looking through remote control. Now, I did put connectors on the bottom before, but I put them on the back now. There's multiple reasons for that. First of all, well, uh, not sure if this is a more important reason or not, eh, whatever. So, one reason is that it makes it easier to connect stuff, because if you are having connected connector on the bottom, then you also need a connector on the top on whatever you are landing. But if the connector was on the side, then well, it works with any other connector on the side. And the next reason is that if you land on the landing pad bottom down, the thrusters will just fry their landing pad if they are not high enough. It's much simpler to dock on the side in a direction where in gravity thrusters won't thrust all the time. Also, it takes up a lot less space on whatever you're docking, if, well, the side is smaller than the bottom, which in most cases it is. And, well, a lot of, a lot more of the ship is accessible. You can actually reach the, the downside of it while it's docked, spend it. Uh, another thing. A light is useful to illuminate area around it, because spotlights will just shine forward, but a light will shine all around and it's useful when you're in a cave. Uh, another thing, the downward thruster is not that important in gravity, but it is still useful if you are on a planet with very low gravity, like one of the moons, like Europa, or if you are, for some reason, in the core of the planet where there's no gravity. <laughs> it's useful. You can always just grind it down if you don't need it, uh, yeah, as with all other things. It's the ore detector. I put it near the bottom and then the front. And don't forget to increase its range, or because by default it's by 25, so increase it to 50. I am not sure why it's by default by 25. Oh yeah, big trick, already covered it before, with the projector. There's such a thing with a grid as a pivot. It pretty much decides the direction of your things when you paste it in, and where the projection is aligned when you use a projector to project it. So, to fix your pivot point really easily, have a projector, the sync with two synchies on the front is the front, the four thingies is the top, paste the projector in, and put it in, then cut the grid or copy in the spot where you want to put the projector, so it would be here in this case, and then uh, paste onto it. Uh, you can make the grid further or closer by holding control and scrolling. Uh, let me demonstrate it, uh, let me just first mess up the pivot point, uh, somehow, in a second. There, now it's upside down and 
in a weir very weird place. So if I spawn it in and try to align it by pressing B, it just, it just does this. <laughs> it doesn't pace properly. Very annoying at gravity. So now, I'm just now, projector, cut in this spot, uh, rotate it like you rotate the block, and oh, uh, make sure you, you look at the correct spot when you are copying or cutting it. And there, there we go, all fixed. And also, if you project to projection, projector, blueprints, bam, look at that perfectly aligned with no adjustments. Very convenient. Alright, and now the final step, the fancy stuff. And the control panel stuff. So as you can see, I pretty much didn't use any armor blocks, other than panels and some funky shapes. Use blocks with funky geometry and funky shapes, because armor blocks, boring. This beams and scaffolding, and blah, blah, blah. very interesting. These conveyor caps make for nice decoration. Uh, there are a bunch of decorations that use a lot of PCU, like these heat vents, while being quite small, so probably shouldn't use them a lot. But yeah, it's just some small details to make the shape more coherent and interesting. A bit of layering, like blocks here, then the panels around them to smoothen the colors. I can't really explain what exactly you should do, but well, just look at what stuff people do and analyze it and uh, think of ways to apply it to your own designs. Just experiment. It does not happen on the first try. And now for the setup. Uh, you can change the stuff displayed on the screens in the cockpit. What I do is I pretty much select everything and I have this mod. Easy something something renaming. I will probably link in the description. Very convenient. So rename everything. Uh, before I used to group <laughs> every type of block in like their own groups but it's kinda useless. It just clutters the vision. Uh, the panel. So just group what you need and what you don't need or even put on the code bar, toolbar. Wow, this is a horrible explanation. <laughs> if you don't need to see it in the terminal, which most things you don't, pretty much everything once you grouped it, don't need to see it. And uh, if you don't need to see it in the toolbar config, then turn it off there. So stuff I put in the toolbar config, you could always do some more stuff, but drills in the block tools, cameras, searchlight, conveyor sorter to turn it on and off. So the ejection system is stopped. Connectors, disabling thrusters, battery recharge, uh, the spinny light at the top, and pretty much the stuff that you would use. Uh, you can always just add some more stuff. I might add more stuff because it's been a while since I played survival, so once I test it there, I might need some other stuff. Uh, the drills, uh, they have two options, two modes. Uh, so left click just drills like normal and collects resources, right click takes the big hole but does not collect resources. Common knowledge, but this is somewhat a beginner tutorial, I guess. Probably. I'm not sure how good I am at explaining this to a beginner audience. I'll say I'll say it's good enough. It's it's if you don't understand anything I say, it's it's your fault. Entirely your fault. I am a great explainer. Give me your money. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Uh, well as a bonus, let's go over my previous designs. Uh, the most recent previous iteration was this. I did it with no DLCs, then this one is quite popular. Used it in another one of my minor tutorials. It does use DLCs. So yeah, as you can see what I told you. Armor blocks, eh, kinda boring. Boring! This new version is a little bit widen widened and a little bit shorter. Which is fine, makes it easier to rotate in the caves. It's, it's great actually. <laughs> what else? Yeah, no more bottom connector, side connector. Uh, it's, it's somewhat of a medium sized small miner, because probably as a starter starter miner you would probably just have like one drill, barely any thrust, and that's it. It really depends what settings you are playing with, because the lower the resource yield, and especially if you have no jetpack and uh, small inventory, then you would need a lot of intermediate stages. But if you are playing with jetpack, high inventory, and high resource yields, then you can just fly to a few deposits, mine some stuff and just get, a, get this really quickly. These flat thrusters are amazing. They look very nice and they're very convenient to use. Oh yeah, another thing that I forgot. Uh, minimize the amount of conveyors you use, save the post PCU, which is not very important, but also makes it easier to build your sync and fix any problems, because conveyors do not show up on the control panel, which is annoying, so it might be hard to diagnose conveyor breakage. So if you make your conveyor lines entirely or mostly out of functional components that do display on the control panel, you both save resources and makes it make it easier to diagnose. Oh yeah, another thing. Uh, how much thrust you would have? Uh, usually I have, so the forces for one of these thrusters, maximum thrust 176 kilonewtons, that means it can cover 57 tons in 1G. 
at full power. However, you can't really ascend with it. So usually you would want to have two times the thrust of the mass you would load. This thing can load around. It weighs around 25 tons. Let's finish product at uh, 27 tons. And it can load, I'd say, 40 tons probably. So it's like drill, drill, car container, car container, then connector and maybe it's a cockpit and so the drill sends these cargo containers have 3.4 kiloliters if i'm not mistaken or sway 2.7 kilos per liter all of them which is convenient so a fully filled up container with ore let me check like nine tons yeah so 36 total in drills and containers and then some additional stuff in the con connectors and the cockpit and you get like 40 tons so yeah that way it will be able to fly on part of with higher gravity oh yeah another set when setting stuff up uh Antennas, don't forget to turn them off by default, M minimum radius, so you don't have problems. Uh, disable used for parking on the connectors and landing gear, because it will cause confusion for you sometimes, might be annoying. Same stuff for the beaconers for the antenna. Uh, set up the colors and intensity and blah 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 for the spotlights and lights, whatever you like. The remote control also has a, a toolbar, so don't forget to set that up if you have a remote control. And uh, name your inventories to differentiate them for convenience. Oh uh, yeah, the difference between the beacon and the antenna. Beacon, beacon just shows beacon. Antenna can broadcast stuff, so you can control the ships through it. And like, okay, both of the broadcast stuff, so why, why have both? Because the beacon, if I'm not mistaken, it consumes less power, and also it has higher range. So you can show your location at higher ranges. It's a very rich case scenario that you would need to show your location actively at high distance, but eh, might as well have it. Again, don't need it, grind it down. And the difference between PCU, so this one, the fancy stuff, 18,000, not so, <laughs> 1800, and the basic is 1400, so it's like, eh, 30, 20% on the ships is small. For larger, larger stuff, it will be even smaller percentage wise of a difference, so it might as well just add stuff. Uh, the vent, don't forget to put it on the depressurize, so it will suck the oxygen. Yeah, and as you can see, the cockpit does have a tiny bit of oxygen storage. All right, uh, I did think up of something else to talk about. Uh, let's go over the visual stuff after all, a little bit more. So uh, I already said that you should use funky blocks instead of armor. Another trick, uh, the functional blocks also count as funky blocks. And you can look at all these psingies on them. Wow, so much psingies. <laughs> Don't cover it up with armor, it looks nice. So that way, instead of covering the whole ship with armor, wasting a bunch of time and resources, and then needing to put some more decoration on top of that to compensate, you can just bam use what is already there. Uh, do not be afraid of doing asymmetrical stuff, just make it look somewhat balanced. As long as it looks fine, it's fine. Uh, pretty much anything can be made to work visually, it's good enough with enough trying. And also try to alternate between blocks, like I could have used a beam here instead of with this pillar, but I didn't. Use a bunch of different blocks so it looks, it looks interesting, it doesn't look the same. Like a bit of a disruption here in this pipe, so it doesn't look like a giant log pipe. Some alternation in the beams here. All right. Uh, it's a miner, might as well show it mining. Let's spawn in the planet. Yeah, might as well, since we are talking about miners, I'm going to tell you how to spot ore spots. This saturated stuff in the ground hides ore be beneath them. This stinky dirt, dirt on part them might hide ice beneath it. Some regions have more ores. There's uh, ore and just terrain maps for the planets. I, I might link them in the description. Someone made them. Oh, bloop it in. Bloop. Yeah, look at that. Pivot point. Totally fine. Bam. Aligned to gravity. All right. We have iron, we have cobalt. And let's get to digging. First, you would want to make somewhat of a tunnel. Probably don't go directly down. Go more like this. 45 degrees. So it will be easier to get in and out. And hold right click for the big hole. Yeah, as you can see, the sides are lit up by this light here. Without it, it would be... Let's disable it. Mm, it would be quite dark. And see, there's a bunch of other spinny lights here, and the light is coming in from the outside, so let's go deeper and see. Oh, or hmm. let's see that much of a difference. What what light illuminates everything? Let's just disable light. Uh, I guess it's that I'm outside. The light shines in. <laughs> Whatever. You might need to go to the dark side of the planet to properly see it, but uh, you'll just have to believe me. <laughs> Let's get to mining. As you can see, stone is being pooped out. Very convenient. Make sure to keep aligned. Do not drift from side to side. And that's it. We are full. Very nice. And now we stick it a little. There. It's just that easy. And also a handheld drill. Also has an ore detector. So if you if you hold it, you detect ores. Convenient. And large grid ore detector has a range of like 150 meters. This one 
The small one only has 50 meters. I'm not sure about the handheld drill. Uh, a trick when flying. Again, it's useful to have your main thrust direction upwards because gravity. So when you want to maneuver, you might want to pitch, tilt, yo, whatever, your ship. And use the upward thrust for maneuvers. Probably shouldn't risk it with the full cargo container. Yeah, what else? Uh, the camera near the connector helps with docking. So that's convenient to have. And uh, you can also zoom in with the camera by scrolling. So that's convenient. Uh, that's it. Lesson over. Like, subscribe, give me all your money. And uh, all the stuff, all the link in the description. For the blueprint, for the mods, for the money giving place. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> see you later.